welcome to Chamonix in the French Alps for what is the best known ultra trail race in the world. The Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc for 10 years in a row. This has been where the best runners have met to dispute the pinnacle of trail running. 168 kilometers around the roof of Europe. And in 10 years, this has become incredibly popular. 6,000 entrants in this year's race. And trail running now proposing new challenges. So the 11th Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc, the perfect occasion to announce the fact that there will be a world tour, including, of course, the UTMB, the Marathon des Sables, the Western States in the USA, the Ultra Trail Mont Fiji in Japan, and of course, New Zealand, Hong Kong, Italy and Spain, all hosting big events on this world tour. Catherine Poletti, the race organizer this year. She says the 2014 dream of the tour is almost upon us. Uh, we've picked the most beautiful trail races in the year. And we invite people to enter all the races, but of course it doesn't matter if you can't do that. And uh, saying it's very important that amateurs feel that they can enter these races as well. To be ranked in the tour, the runners uh, will work off a coefficient that's been calculated and that will depend as uh, it does in many top sports on the quality of the field that have entered and a really exciting prospect for 2014. Well, the race, of course, starting in Chamonix and ending in Chamonix, but it goes via Italy and Switzerland. And uh, the first good bit of news is that the weather is perfect, unlike last year, where the course had to be shortened dramatically. So it will be run over the full 168 kilometer race. 2,469 runners in all, 223 women entered in the race this year. A test, of course, of both physical and mental strength. And the start is at the Plante de Triangle de l'Amiti. <laughs> really stressed, but very excited as well. Looking forward to uh, getting some pleasure out of this. If I can get around and enjoy it, I'll be a very happy man. I'm excited to start now, because uh, it's been so long uh, waiting here all day, and now it's going to happen. C'est une grande émotion. Je viens de l'Italie. Big emotion. I come from uh, Italy. Wish me luck. Pain. <laughs> Pain, fun, new experience. Vivre ça moins une fois dans sa vie, c'est bien. My family sacrificed a lot over the last few months. We've been here a few days now, and I'm absolutely brimming with emotion. Well, the bulk of the competitors are here simply to cross the finish line, to see what they can do. And there's a very friendly atmosphere down on the start line, but it's a highly competitive race as well. 20 runners in all that could win. We've got the Frenchman, Chagnot and Churier, the Spaniards, Harras and Utrieta. Americans, Jones, Kubrika certainly fancy their chances this time round. And the Swedish uh, Bud is, is an excellent runner, as is Portuguese Saar. They are the likely men to take the top prize. In the women's category, well, five-time winner Lizzie Hawker isn't here this year, so an opportunity for others. Spaniards Rocca and Rocas, Americans Rosie Bozio, and the Italian Katia Fori could be the ones who steal the crown this time round. And so at 4.30 p.m., they start the 168 kilometer run. It's not the distance, it's the amount of climbing that they do on the way round that really makes this so different. 9,706 meters of ascent. Well, the top runners go off fast, but for the masses, it takes a long, long time before they can pick up speed. And this has become one of the great spectacles, not just in Chamonix, but all around 
the Mont Blanc Massif. So as they hit the first climb, the pace already pretty stiff at the front of the field and the mass of runners spread out along the mountain trails. They are going to have some of the most unbelievable views and they deserve it after last year's storms. So as they approach the Col de Forza after 14 kilometers, a little more than an hour already raced. Three men uh, out in front. Chaurier is there, Go is there. And surprisingly, the Chinese runner, Yan Kuo Yun, an excellent performance so far from him. But the gaps between the top runners, not really significant at this stage. Two other races competed in on the same weekend. The first of which is the TDS, Sur les traces de Duc de Savoie, on the Savoie Dukes tracks. 119 kilometers from Courmayeur in Italy to Chamonix, via the Savoie. 700 or 7,250 meters of ascent throughout the race regarded as the easiest of the three races that take place. Un petit peu d'avance sur montant, donc on va gérer un petit peu la montée, comme ça après vu la grande descente qui nous attend. This runner saying he's ahead of schedule at the moment, so he's just taking time to relax. He's uh, decided what pace he wants to go at. Quentin Stefan. Good French runner. Yeah, he fell, broke both of his sticks. He fell on the uh, muddy downhill section. Did he hurt? Well, he says uh, his hamstrings and adductors have uh, hurt a bit, but uh, he'll keep going. Finally, after 15 hours, 9 minutes, 59 seconds, the Spaniard, Arno Julia, takes the win, 11 minutes ahead of French on Antoine Goulion, who's second for the second year in a row. Over a thousand runners finishing the TDS this year, 500 retirements. We're born movers. We climb trees, race down the hall, and throw stones as far as we can. So how did moving become a burden? Well, we're told to sit still and listen, and slowly we stop. And then we wonder, why are we out of breath? Why do our backs hurt and our bellies grow? Move Week is your chance to change the tide by organizing a team, an event, or a race to help people find their move. Become a move agent and make your move at nowwemove.com. Get Eurosport.com for your iPhone free. Every day sees full and expert coverage of sports news with dozens of articles and an easy one-stop video section that lets you live and relive the very best moments of sport. Follow all the scores, fixtures and tables live. Eurosport.com, the reference in sport apps available on the App Store. Follow the score of your favourite team live and find the latest results and fixtures with Eurosport's live score.
Welcome back to the UTMB. A busy race weekend in the Chamonix area. The second race held on the same uh, weekend. A race of 100 kilometers from Cormier to Chamonix. And it goes around the north of the Mont Blanc. Second most difficult race, the CCC. 1,900 competitors, of which 1,320 managed to make the finish line before the cutoff of 26 hours. So another good uh, result for the Spaniards. This time it's Jordi Bess from Giron who comes through to win the CCC. And that's certainly his best ever achievement in the women's category, Caroline Chabarot of France taking the win. Now let's go back to the uh, UTMB. Race going for almost two hours now and the leaders passing Saint Gervais, the second of the 17 aid stations on the route. Julien Chaurier, the winner of the uh, race in 2012, still leading, but he's been uh, rejoined by Pasquale Giguet, who's in his first ever 100 mile race. And then a few seconds back to the Chinese Yun, but uh, already a two minute gap opened up between them and Jonas Bud of Sweden. biggest climb from there. This is uh, Sebastian Chagnot. He's in a bad way. He's uh, overexhausted. And uh, yeah, suddenly he fell ill and was robbed of all his energy. So one of the big favorites, Sebastian Chagnot, out of the race for this year. So as night falls on the mountains, the pace slows for most of the runners. The leaders, though, approaching Col de Bonhomme, 2,443 metres. And that completes the first quarter of the course. Three men out in the lead at the moment. Chourier of France, Xavier Thévenard and Emmanuel Gaulle, the French dominating the leaderboard in the early stages. Fifth on the track is the uh, somewhat surprising Spaniard, Javier Dominguez. He's not part of any professional team. And he's less than two minutes behind those four big names. And ahead of some big names like the American star, Anton Krupika. Juliana Cavallo. Top nine men grouped within four minutes of each other. And then there's a big gap back. On the women's side, Rory Bozio of America has uh, opened up a one minute lead over the much favored Nuria Pika. And now, called the same, the Eretta Morfavre before that long descent down into Cormayeur. And at Cormayeur, Harass uh, with the lead, but the leading four men Absolutely packed together. Shuria and Fedenard caught by the Spaniel, Spaniard uh, Heras, and uh, of course, you saw there Krupika with the long hair, and otherwise known as Jesus on the tour. But 
us. Quick to leave the feed station. Then enough, after a long delay at the feed station, really accelerating and taking the lead comfortably and pushing a steady pace. 50 kilometers to go. And the masses still have a long, long way to go, but it's starting to hot up for the leaders. The Porsche 911 GT3, the star mark of the world's fastest one-make race series. But who's going to rule the roost this season on some of Formula One's most spectacular circuits? The Porsche Super Cup, live from Monza, Sunday at 11.45 on Eurosport. So as the sun rises on the Mont Blanc range for the second day of racing in the UTMB. Competitor number 300 passing the Grand Col Ferret, the highest point of the course, 2,537 metres. And that is the 100th kilometre of the race, 68 kilometres to go for this man. views that they're afforded today have to be the number one reason for competing in ultra trail races. Seven thirty in the morning. Xavier Thethenar is twenty-five kilometres further on than those who've just gone over the high point, and he's maintaining a really steady pace throughout. The young runner from the Jura increasing his lead. In the women's, it's the same situation. Rory Bozia of USA having a fantastic run, only ten kilometres behind the men's leader, and now has a one-hour gap on the Spaniard Nuria Pica. Victory seems inevitable for Bozia, the American. Thelenar now done at 132 kilometers as he goes through the section known as the bovine. He's sharing the climb with the free roaming an animals. Says his uh, legs are a little bit painful, but <laughs> that's understandable. Says he just uh, has to keep going. It's the same for everyone. He, he knows now that it ceases to be a, a physical challenge. This is all about strength of the head. Where does he find the strength? Well, to be honest, he says, I don't know. So after some bad moments in the night, the Spaniards found some new energy with a rising sun and Hera taking back second place overall. He's eight minutes 53. Krupika of America, strong during the night, but starting to fade now in the early morning. He's now a full 20 minutes behind the leaders. And Dominguez in fourth place, 27 minutes behind. <laughs> Mais là, ça va mieux. Là, j'ai eu un gros coup de barre tout à l'heure. Et là, ça commence à mieux. He says uh, he's felt better in his life, but uh, seriously, he he's feeling better than he did a few hours ago. So things looking up for Shurie. Rory Bozia increasing the pace, wanting to stay ahead of uh, her competitors. Very high rhythm that she set all the way throughout. Now the last climb is to the pass of La Tête au Vent at 157 kilometers. And then the penultimate challenge, the descent down to Chamonix. Fethenar took 
tackle out in the CCC in 2010 and won that at his first attempt. Three years later, here he is in the UTMB, a man who practices cross-country skiing all through the winter, has built himself a 20-minute lead. Miguel Heras now really trying to defend second place because a win is not possible unless Fedenar has a disaster. And Fedenar just keeps the pace going and going and with such a massive lead he can enjoy the massive crowd that's gathered in Chamonix. What a moment for this young man. 20 hours, 34 minutes and 57 seconds. He enters history. I can't believe it, he says. I started to think about doing this race last year when I was training on my skis and it became my main objective to win. But I can't really believe it's happened, it's crazy. He's very, very emotional. Miguel Heras of Spain, 19 minutes, 11 seconds down on the winner. He was one of the favorites at the start. Certainly his injuries had an effect. And uh, give him credit, he had to pull out last year. Javier Dominguez, another Spaniard taking third place. Perhaps the surprise of this year's race. I, I didn't expect that I, I was going to get in, into this position with those gr uh, great run, uh, runners. So for me, I, uh, this has been incredible, incredible. I, I have no words to explain this. Right? So again, a slightly unexpected podium, but fabulous performances, particularly by Fedenar. So, so solid. And the American, Rory Bozier, looks as though she's only run a couple of yards. It's been an unbelievable display from her. Maybe she's discovered what Lizzie Hawker's secret was. Hawker, remember, the Brit who's won this event five times, couldn't race this year because of injury, but take nothing away from Rory Bozier. Her performance, absolutely outstanding. It's like the cherry on top of a cake. So, um, yeah, it's nice, I'll take it. <laughs> but it would have been great without it too. I just had a lot of fun running out there and the trails were excellent and all the scenery was great so and it was a butt kicker but it was fun it certainly was those records she broke the fastest time she's also the highest placed woman seventh overall well, as for all those uh, out there who weren't in contention for the win it's all about beating the cutoff times, and they're pretty tough on this course. They have 46 hours in which to complete the race. And that means they've got to maintain a speed throughout of 4.5 kilometers per hour. achieve their quest. They can count on the public support throughout, but there are volunteers all over the course, helping with drink, food, medical care, and of course, some encouragement as well. Sometimes, volunteers the help is just aren't enough especially during the second night of running when it gets really painful this runner saying it's more about morale than it is about physical my competitor admitting defeat, saying he just didn't have it in him this year. Pressure of running to the clock is uh, a tough one. We all want to rest, but we know that we won't make the margins if we do. Two, three minute stop. It's a tight schedule now, but he'll keep going. And the 
clock just keeps kicking. Some hard, some cutoffs are very, very hard to make. Valacine at 149 kilometers, where the time barrier is fixed at 9.15 a.m. The tightest of all the cutoffs. And if they make that one, they know they can make it into Chamonix. Is it okay for them to continue? Just, she says. They can both continue, but I think they're going to be last. It's close. She's missed the cut -off. No amount of pleading is going to make any difference. After all that pain. After all I drifted ashore through the streams of oceans, whispers are wasted in the sand. As we were dancing in the blue, I was synchronized with you. But now the sound of love is out of tune. The elite athletes are unbelievable, but for everyone else, this is a fight against their own limits. And it deserves huge respect, huge admiration. And it's just as inspiring as the top runners. On va chercher des choses qu'on pensait pas avoir. C'est ça la magie. Fine bits of ourselves that we didn't know existed is Richard Harrison, moi. one of the British competitors. For moi, perso. I've been like this since uh, uh, Champex. Champex? Yeah. You are like this from Champex? Yeah, yeah. He's now raced for 15 hours with a severe spasm in his hip and back. And still finds the will to run. Of the 2,469 runners, over 60% complete the course this year. 1,686 of them. A fantastic accomplishment for every single one. The winners. Fedenar takes the men's title. Rory Buzia of USA, seventh overall, and the fastest woman. the slowest of the runners share the podium with the winners this edition blessed with good weather and every single one of these competitors will go home with great memories the pain forgotten and they'll be back next year hopefully we'll see you then goodbye